I don't want to listen to his podcast, huh? Dude, it's educational. And besides, I've been wanting to listen to this one. Welcome to Idling in the Impala, a podcast by and for lovers of Supernatural and the fan fiction it inspires. I'm Sandra. I'm Carly. And it's another Cannon Fodder episode, guys, because hey. we know how much you love them. We I love do. them as well. I love them a lot. We love them. We do. So um, we figured we'd start off with uh, my sharing this time first, although I can't remember if I usually go first or Sandra goes first, um, I think we just but I'm going first this time. Depending, yeah. Who's, who's more prepared and <laughs> it would be you every time yeah <laughs> this time guys <laughs> she got no notes she got nothing she was like yeah no we'll do cannon fodder tomorrow um I, shit i don't have anything I'll, I'll, it's fine we'll do cannon fodder tomorrow so she is not prepared i mean i'm not prepared but i'm never prepared and i would like to think none of you guys would know if i didn't tell you endlessly <laughs> how unprepared i am but <sighs> We're going to go with mine first, because this is one that I sold Sandra on, and she's actually read it, whereas the one that Sandra's going to sell me on, I haven't read yet. So my... It's not so much a one... Oh my God, words. It's not one story. (laughs) It's a series. Oh my God. What was that? Sandra, cut that out. That was dreadful. (laughs) Terrible acting. I was watching that blooper reel the other day. Oh God, Jared, this is terrible acting. This never stops you before. <laughs> so also, because I'm still mad at Misha, I was like, stop being so funny, you fuck. <laughs> Damn it. But yeah, oh my God. So yeah, it's not it's not just one work, one story, one fic. It's a series. So it's called Um West Series. It's by an author called Runaway Dreamer. I know she's listening. Hi. Um <laughs> And originally she posted it on Live Journal between 2012 and 2013. And then because the fanfic gods shined on me, she brought it over to AO3 and I found it. And it's just gone from there to be honest. She like, this is my new hyperfixation, guys. Sometimes <laughs> I find an author and I'm like, yes, all of this in my face. Jesus Christ. It happened with D. It happened with Sandra. And it's happened with Dreamer now. And I'm like, yes, all of this. You got any more of those live journal fakes? Fucking <laughs> hell. Um, Has she? Yeah, she's she's done a few um, like one shot ones as well. Okay. And then she's got her epic Sandman series, which we'll get into maybe. But we're focusing, we're focusing on West. So it's Wincest. Um, all of their stuff is either Wincest or J2. Um, and it's all incredible. It's all incredible. But this is this is Wincest, and it's sort of the premise is they start out just giving each other hand jobs if neither of them has got laid in a while. They can't be bothered to go out and find somebody. They're in the ass crack of nowhere, you know, things like that. Just like it doesn't mean anything, it's just skin, blah, blah, blah. And it progresses from there. So there's four installments, um, and they're all titled from May West quotes, which is why it's called the West series. So I've read all of them. Sandra, have you read all of them now? I finished last night. <laughs> She's so fucking prepared, guys. That's why I have no notes on my on my Vic recommendation <laughs> because I was like up until I swear it was like 1030 finishing part four because part four is like one of the longest ones. And it I is. looked at the words. I was like, oh, shit. I'm like, I got to though. I got to because I was I'd been like putting off um, after reading the three parts and I was just like okay let me let me get into this yeah but why but why why did you I, finish part three because like, I fuck? wanted because I I didn't I didn't have time and I wanted to save it for when I had time to really just enjoy it and not have to like go through it quicker you know what I mean like one of those this is a lot of reading and there's so many great things in it that I didn't want to like skip you know what I mean I wanted to really like enjoy the I wanted to enjoy the writing um and the feels as much as you know I could. So I, I need I needed time yeah. to do that. It's been a busy week. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. fucking Christmas and stuff. Yeah. How dare it? Just yeah, yeah, yeah. How dare it? How dare it get in the way of reading fanfic? Yep. Absolutely. I will tell you that my Christmas did not. <laughs> it did not at all. It did not. I was reading fanfic on Christmas night. Okay. Well, my family went to bed and I couldn't sleep. So mm-hmm. I was like, well, you guys mm-hmm. suck. 
Mm-hmm. That might have been because they stayed up and I had like a two-hour nap. But that's mm-hmm. irrelevant. I nap all the time. They should be used to this fucking. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And it starts off, it starts from Sam's point of view, and you get a lot of Sam's like internal monologue, which is really great because y'all know how much I want to be all up in Sam's business all the time. I love that they have the parentheses in like when they're when they're writing. Um mm-hmm. there's almost like this back and forth in Sam's yeah. head on occasion where like and it's always revolving around Dean, which I absolutely love. But like, yeah, like the parentheses of um, the contrast or the the fighting within his own brain as to like how he's supposed to interpret or how he's feeling about such and such. Those are just so perfect little pockets of fun and oh my gosh, like those those kinds. Of, I love that that how that's represented that internal dialogue yeah. that way. And I will say it's very it's very true to Canon Sam, which is good lord nobody angsts like sam yeah nobody angsts like sam he's the best so it's very much sam coming to terms with with being in love with his brother and being like but dean couldn't possibly want me and Mm -hmm. being like a big old drama baby about it which Mm -hmm. i love because that's just it's just sam isn't it Mm -hmm. so it it is i i don't know about you but i i found it quite apart apart from the fucking i found it quite kind of compliant in that way yeah i I think so definitely because I think even the way the the show itself starts out is very much not Sam POV, but Sam focused anyway. And it's like Sam's story and Sam's journey, um, especially within the first few seasons, which this is, this is, it says early canon. So, I mean, I was, I was trying to get a sense of like, I don't really think it matters time-wise or placement but if it was written you know 2012 2013 then we're talking like um I don't know maybe season five or six maybe um but I don't feel like correct me if I'm wrong I don't feel like the has the apocalypse like all that big stuff is that discussed at all or mentioned it might be and i just wasn't yeah i didn't kind of get that part i don't think it's supposed to be a specific time or place no. but you just know it's early um yeah and i i liked i liked that um i definitely liked getting getting into sam's pov because you're going to hate this carly but as as a dean lover that angst and pining I totally related to immediately and I was like okay so understanding his journey is very different from mine right but then still understanding where all those feelings are coming from kind of thing and his not feeling that he's maybe good enough or that you know his brother's just kind of using him for physical physical necessity rather than anything else and he's overthinking kind of similar Mm -hmm. to the way I think if you think of the stereotypical male female relationship where sometimes a a female has all of the emotions wrapped up more in the action than say the male does so it kind of gave me that vibe right away and i was immediately like yes sam i understand it's too much <laughs> It's too much. It's too much beauty. It's too much stuff to be around and not know what to do with and just to wait, try to figure out what are you thinking? And I love, I really love that the POV is consistent in Sam Mm -hmm. throughout because you don't know what's going on with Dean because you aren't in his head. And I think the progression from part to part to part is so very, it's so very romance. When you really get down to it, I mean, there's a ton of smut and we'll get into it and how great it is, but Mm -hmm. there's a miscommunication, right? There's the, what are you thinking? I can't figure you out. Just tell me, just talk to me, but I can't talk to you. I don't know how to tell you how I feel um, kind of thing. What what I'm getting from this is you're calling Sam a girl. That's what I'm getting from yeah. this. In this in this instance in Heckin terms of in rude in in terms of the again I'm talking stereotypical like the way a uh say a romance or old school, you know, 
partnerships, relationships mm-hmm. are viewed. That's what I got from this. That's just my interpretation from it. Um, this is unforgivable. I will never yeah. forgive this. No, it's he's six it's foot not. four. The emotion and a giant, but it's and the you're like, emotion. Girl, but it's the emotion, it and if you it take is. it out of the the way the way guys are very again stereotypically standoffish and don't express their feelings. Uh, Sam also does that too in this, but because you're getting it, I, I'm sure it'd be totally different. And this is like if runaway dreamer ever had it in her head and you get that towards the end right like i mean spoilers i mean they you know i don't know if we're spoiling or not but they get together like it all it all kind of works itself out it works it comes together at the end yeah because nice. then there's the communication and you do realize that i love the um the phone call like towards the end when it's finally like dean finally uses his words like you know and Mm-hmm. it takes talk for that it takes another it takes another miscommunication on both their parts in a very very intense and hot situation for them to finally like be open and honest with each other and it's beautiful it's beautiful can i say as much yeah. as i do appreciate some destiel fanfic it's never been my go to Wintess is a lot more enjoyable for me. I think mm-hmm. it's because, and maybe it's just, I don't know. I I feel the bond with the brothers just kind of as taboo or whatever. Like people talk about like that kind of kink or whatever, but there's a bond there that just, I feel is so powerful. Like that this just kind of like makes sense to me. Yes. So again, in like, I don't know, somebody might think it's shade or whatever on Destiel. And, you know, not that I don't, don't appreciate that, you know, whatever you want to read and write and love, great. But I, um, especially something like this, when something like this is written so well that I understand it's not just a, it's not just like a sexual thing. It's like, there's a there's a soul level of these these two these two men need each other and have grown up with each other and have relied on each other and even though they don't always communicate well um they understand each other and would never mm. Mm, i mean canon wise we could say there's been issues but wouldn't abandon each other right like at the end of the day and i think that's that's very beautiful and you know you could take that soul that um soulmate thing to this level and it not be you don't have to squint um yes. you know for this kind of a situation it's messed up as all get out but it, it's for them it makes sense right like for them this is their world and it makes sense for them so mm-hmm. yeah i um i really loved it i really did i just i just loved it i don't know if you want to go through the parts and like which each part is necessarily yeah. about if you want to get into the smut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's 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 get into the smut. Nobody nobody's here for for bonds and soulmates and things like that. Everyone's like, tell us about the porn, guys. So um it goes, we go from um part one, which is um another example of Dean being like, oh, horny, please. And Sam's like, oh, fine. But then Sam's sort of like starting to catch feelings, and what would normally be like quite just like you like I can't think of the word. I cannot speak today. What is wrong with me? <laughs> what would be quite clinical, maybe, you know, emotionless, just another thing. Mm-hmm. Like Sam kind of like amps it up in his head and it becomes like this really hot and heavy thing to him. And then he's like, oh, fuck, where did that come from? Mm-hmm. And that's that's like the first bit. And then we have the second bit, the, the, they're in the shower. And I'm not going to say which bit's my favorite until Sandra tells me which one's her favorite. Okay. But they're in the shower. Um, and again, it's this time it's it's Dean repaying the favor to Sam. And there's like um insertion of fingers and things like that. <laughs> and it's incredible. There's no, there's no other way to say it. It's great. And then in absolute any any fic you want to pick on, be Wincest, Destiel, Rita Insert, anything. Dean's the one with the lips, always. And I mean, if you've seen Jensen, I get it, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. 
man has a great mouth. There's mm-hmm. no way to say that and it not sound creepy, is there? Mm-hmm. No, but there isn't. Do. But we're okay with it. <laughs> uh, we're more than okay with it. Trust me, we are more than okay with it. I um, I just did a thirsty Thursday on it actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you did uh, you did the neck right, but like you also. No, it was last week. It was last yeah. week. Yeah, it was Christmas week. It's a time for indulgence. Let's indulge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But in absolute, like Dreamer turns that completely on its head and been like, Sam is the one that someone tries to pick up in a bar with, mm-hmm. like, oh, you got a pretty mouth, kind of thing, and it, it it goes dreadfully wrong for the person. But it does lead to. Like every installment, they go like a little bit further and a little Mm -hmm. bit further physically. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, that's all wrapped up in Sam's what does it mean? Mm -hmm. Angst. Mm -hmm. So then installment three is um, blowjobs. Uh, Justine, I believe. Oh, wait a minute. There's more. There's more in there's more in three than just than just blowjobs. (laughs) Oh wow! There's I've only read it recently. There's, there's as some well. anal play on Sam's part. <laughs> oh, that's not the whole. Like that's not the the you know that's that's not the um. No, but I mean oh, mouth. Yeah, mouth there is. Too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that comes in as part of it. That's that's part of it. I, I don't. I don't I, distinguish those things. You, wait a minute. Okay, wait. Time out. <laughs> <laughs> It's not in my life, but so it's wait. quite common in fanfic. So blowjob versus you to so the the, <laughs> the mouth <laughs> stuff that Sam is doing to Dean, I feel like could be like broken up into parts. But you're saying like the blowjob issue let, also let, let incorporates me, me... the butt? <laughs> well, to not, me, no. Not in, my, not in my life. Okay, no, we'll we'll split that up. We'll split that up. Okay. So there's blowjobs, and then there's... There's not just... Oh. I mean, there's, like... There are other parts down there that Sam involves his mouth in. Like, like seriously involves, like... <laughs> yes. 100%. We'll, so we'll separate them out, because I've just been informed by Sandra that apparently they are not one in the same, Callie. What are you talking about? So, yes, there's d- Sam, blowjob, Dane, and then Sam, mouth, other parts of Dane. Separate things. There's not one in the same sex act separate things i had to go in and look at that because i'd forgotten because all i could remember was the killer blowjob <laughs> that's all i could remember of that one yeah no there's um, um... <laughs> yeah wow we're so fucking professional what has happened it, to us i don't know because it's because it's so like <laughs> <laughs> okay i i gotta say and you know you this wanna just cut this all out and start no absolutely not (laughs) this is the fun bit um the thing i i've expressed my love for with fan fiction is dean dean using his words um yes and it's sort of like a slow build up to that i feel like the first the first part's very much like you said it's kind of clinical and doing the deed you know for whatever reason just to get each other get each other off or whatever but as that, I guess, intimacy or the um, the experimenting progresses, you see more of um, Dean's inherent enjoyment of it along with Sam. They both open up more. And I just love, mm-hmm. I just love when a writer makes me know that this is Sam. I mean, this is Sam and Dean. Like this is, this is them. Like this is a, easy extension and believability of what they would be doing. And I think a lot of it is the way Dean just, we've talked about this and I think we're going to do an episode about it before, but just um, enjoyment of sex in general and his partner. And in this case, the partner being Sam and just what he goes to town (laughs) where they both do. But yeah, there's, there's that he's very, He's very talkative towards the end, and I absolutely love that. <laughs> yes. I absolutely love that. Yes. So I did I did just flick through, and there is a reciprocal <laughs> blowjob from Dean. Only the blowjob is reciprocated, nothing, nothing else at yeah. this point. But my gosh, what Sam does to Dean, like, I'm just, the physical acrobatics of that, like, I just imagining and the description and 
the positioning and the... I have to be young and flexible again. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I was ever that flexible, <laughs> even when I was younger. So that's just um yeah, there's a lot in yeah. that one. Um, and then a lot of feelings. Uh again, Sam Sam leaves in that Sam one, leaves. right? Sam leaves yeah. in that one. Um Sam Sam goes all in. Sam goes all in, he puts all his chips on the table and then goes, oh fuck. And runs off. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's so that's kind of like it's the third installment. It's the start of the end, but that that leads into a period where they kind of pull apart a little bit in the, in the fourth installment, and they you know they they're not doing anything with each other then, and it's sounds like it's weird. I don't mm-hmm. like it, but mm-hmm. Dean's like pretending that everything is fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. And we find out later that Dean was like, I was, I was, what you see is what you get. I was waiting for you to come to me. And Sam was like, God, what? he's such a flirty shit. And I absolutely love it to no end. I love, yes. I fucking love that about him. I just love it. And I love how much Dreamer leans into that um, with him. Yeah. Cause it's, it, it's Sam, it's Sam with, with all the hangups. It's Sam. Dean's inviting it multiple times. And Sam's like, oh no, I can't. Mm-hmm. No one, mm-hmm. no one angst like Sam Winchester. <laughs> um, but then they kind of Dean kind of like engineers a scenario, mm-hmm. I want to say, mm-hmm. and kind of gets gets them back on track. And then mm-hmm. um, Sam still Sam still am- angsting up a storm. And I like I don't I don't want to spoil the ending because it's it's well worth the whole everything is worth it. But the ending is fucking gold star. But Sam does something, and Dean is the one that goes nah, nope, and leaves. Well, and it's that have, assumption, right? It's that. Yeah. This is what I kind of, I love that Dreamer gets about Dean is he's always unsure if somebody could really care or want him for Mm -hmm. him. And I think it's that, you know, that questioning, you know, of, are you sure? Am I good enough? Why am I just this, you know, am I just this, you know, this thing that you're utilizing too. And do you really think Mm -hmm. that's why? Do you really think that's why I would do that? Do you think I would do that? And there's always that, there's always that beautiful checking in that they Mm -hmm. keep referring to over and over again. The Dean cares enough and checks in with Sam throughout all of it. You know what I mean? Even when it gets Mm -hmm. super super intense and hot and smutty and all that, there's still that care there that I think easily translates into you see that in canon and understand how much he's I don't think he just he just doesn't believe he's worth it you know and I guess yeah. Sam doesn't too but I feel like and we've talked about this too Carly I think Dean has been left on his own a few more times by Sam more than vice versa you know what I mean like I just don't think they never left. You know, it was always Sam. So it's kind of that. Oh my goodness. He's just not, he's just, he doesn't think anybody could care about him that much. And, yeah. but yeah, Sam does. Um, so yeah, that's, that got me, you know, it's like, you know, cause I, yeah. you could kind of see the walls breaking down, you know, and the facade that is Dean for everybody to see, but, and he's even manages to keep that facade up with Sam, which is pretty remarkable considering how close they are that, you know, Sam should have seen past it, but still with his own angst and, you know, inner dialogue couldn't get past that and just like see what was right in front of him. Um, Mm. yeah. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it so much. It was it, so it do it do get a little bit angsty. Yeah. But then they both use their words, which mm-hmm. is amazing. It's mm-hmm. like well, one of my biggest Winces kinks is when they talk to each other. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. But they do. They use their words and they, they talk it out. And then the, we, we finally we finally get that. Mm-hmm. We finally get that. Mm-hmm. And it's fucking great. It I am amazed really at how much how much smut. <laughs> <laughs> is in this but like mm, like the, the build up and 
just the pictures that I think Dreamer paints in your head with the smut is so very amazing. And yeah, I um I don't know, all the stars everywhere across the board. It's I'm so glad as well that they moved their stuff over to AO3 yes. because I wouldn't have I wouldn't have known um about nope. this amazing writer and what they the fact that it's like 10 years old too you know and just and it's, it's so, so great. great yeah it's just so great so, great. Yeah. so i i have to ask i'm gonna take a stab in the dark and say the fourth installment is your favorite because that's got the most plot to pawn but correct me if i'm wrong um yeah i mean it, it, yeah if we're going with that yeah just in all of it yeah, but the fourth one, and then probably <laughs> the shower one is probably See, second. The shower, the shower one is my favorite one. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. There's just something about that one that just sticks in my mind, and it sticks in my mind so violently that I forgot half of the plot of the third one. Yeah, because my brain was like shower blowjob. Mm. I, I, I think completely the, forgot. I think the visuals of that. I think it's it's those are probably the most like of course like both of the boys wet or whatever but like the positioning and you know dean again like dean behind sam and all of those like you know visuals there's talking him. as well there's talking and that's like there's i think talking. that's why when 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 he starts to talk it's just like oh boy <laughs> hold on yeah here we go here we Dreamer. go because that breaks it down. Like that's like okay, yeah. here's where the wall starts to come down. Yeah, there's some there's some authors, and I like. Well, I would I would never bash any fanfic here. That's that's not what we're about. But there are some authors that just capture my personal head cannons about how how the boys would be in bed. And some people will write things and have them talk, and I'm like, yeah, that's great. And then mm-hmm. other people will write things, and I'm like, Jesus fuck, were you inside my brain? Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. And this, this was one of those all the things that Dean says, and I'm like, fucking yes, mm-hmm. all of that, mm-hmm. like right the way through as well. But I, I, I think, I think it's because the shower is when Dean sort of starts to starts to open up <laughs> in much the same way as Sam is opening up in a very different way. Oh, good God, what's happened to me? Um. I, I was just, just that one's just my favorite. So, the first three installments are under 10k words. I mean, the third one just barely, but they're all under 10k. And then the the fourth installment is like 25k. Yeah. So they are long, mm-hmm. but they are so 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 worth it. Nothing is wasted. There's no part of any of these where you're like, oh, I'm bored. Just to get to the next bit. It all paints this really beautiful, beautiful picture. And you can really, I mean, I, I can see it. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. Absolutely. I like too that it's, because it's early canon, it's kind of like, it's all based in like, you know, motel rooms and job to job and hunt to hunt and and that kind of thing. And, you know, there's uh-huh. um the, the little like vignettes, like you said, the, um, like how their how their day to day life is is kind of like explored too in a way where you really do understand how much time they spend together. Like it's it's twenty four seven in a very small space, and you think about the years of that, and then the just the brotherly um, camaraderie mm-hmm. and how Dean's always like you know giving Sam a hard time and. Um, you know, just all of that layered to give you a sense of how connected they are. Um, Mm -hmm. All the codependency, you know, that's, that's there um, is very interesting. And also I, I thought it it was, you know, I think it's kind of established or most in most people's heads anyway, I know, I think mine is that, you know, um, Dean being very open to different types of sexual um, experiences with, you know, it doesn't have to be just female, like male or whatever. And I think that 
getting the little bit that, you know, Sam has experimented as well, um, like early mm. on, like maybe when he was away at college or whatever, different things like that. But I like that that's kind of in there too, as well, that, you know, they've, they've, they've had those experiences and then are bringing that all together here, but in a way that's so much more important and uh, life affirming, I think, you know, in a weird way for both of them, like, you know, this is, this is what their life is and it's, it could be okay. Mm. Like nobody else has to be in that bubble, but them when it comes to Mm. that. I'm interested in how, you know, my head kind of goes into how do they navigate that? Like how much of that is expressed, you know, openly moving forward or if it's still like their secret because it's so very special. You know what I mean? Like to them mm. after they they do the they do and say the things. Um yeah. Yeah. I what, what changes yeah, yeah after that bit. Yeah. 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 I can I can see that. It's all it's also very heightened also very important uh you know and like and i just wonder like you know a couple years down the line what is their what does their relationship look like you know that kind of thing too and how easy is Mm. it you know because right now i think i remember hearing reference like you know i'm not in my 30s any i'm not in my 20s anymore sammy or whatever so i think it's like it's at least early 30s maybe like maybe early thirties for both of them. Maybe like Sam's just 30 and maybe I guess he would be 34. Um, Mm. It's a long time. It's a long time to live with another person. So at the attached at the hip um, thing, you know, I mean, it's it's like a married couple. Um, Mm. Yeah. It's, I really, I really do like it. Is dreamer. Have I got it right? Have you said that you think Dreamer leans a little more Dean in terms of mm-hmm. out of the two? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I kind of got that right away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thank surrounded you, by Dean people. I'm surrounded by Dean. Dream thank people. Thank, thank you, Dreamer. Uh, Dean, Dream. Oh, my God. I can't speak. Dean people. The I s- adoration for Dean is off the charts. <laughs> if you if you are a If you are a Dean lover... And you've never like, you know, dipped your toes into incest. I think this is a really easy, like ease into it because you totally get, you totally get Sam's POV, I think. Yeah, he acts like a girl, apparently. (laughs) It's a great bridge between female reader insta and hardcore incest. Do you You not think, do you not think that's, I mean, when when I, when I talk about like stereotypes. sensitive boy okay sensitive muffin all that stuff but if you talk about the stereotypical yeah. male female romance like that kind of stuff i don't want to admit it but yes <laughs> i prefer to, i prefer to think of him as a sensitive muffin he's in touch with his feelings and you can well. and you can well uh, yeah but in touch with his feelings and like every other romance where they don't talk to each other <laughs> listen there's very there's a there's a a big difference between being in touch with your feelings and sharing those feelings with someone else. You could know exactly how you feel. Yeah. He doesn't, but that's not the point. But he then could. you could argue that Dean is a sensitive muffin, which he is, because apparently he was said he isn't. He was dealing with all of that stuff too, but you just didn't know because it was all from Sam's POV. So yeah. if they had flipped it, right, and it had been Dean's POV, we would have gotten the same vibe, I feel like, too. Yeah. Because, you know, looking at from the outside looking in, Sam. Sam is very, I think, open with his feelings in this weird way to other people that he interacts with for cases and different things like that. But he doesn't necessarily express it all the time with Dean either. So you could have flipped it and probably gotten the same thing. I'm kind of glad they did it this way. <laughs> I really like Oh, because there's not enough things out there that paint Dean as this fabulous human being and we look at him through rose tinted glasses and he's adored by all there's okay. just nothing to fix out there guys okay. right more jesus sandra hasn't found them all yet okay carly <laughs> <laughs> but it's <No>. true <laughs> 
but I like <laughs> I like this for different reasons, which is yeah. I like being inside Sam's head. Mm-hmm. I do. Mm-hmm. It's I'm always envious of people who can be inside Sam's head and write him nice. Because when I'm in his head, oh boy, it's a different story completely. <laughs> he is a moody, angsty boy when I have charge of him. But I I I agree with you. I don't want to agree with you, but I do. I agree with you about like looking at Dean through someone's eyes and seeing all the things that we see. It's like looking at Dean through your own eyes. Mm. But I just I I enjoy the time in Sam's head. He's oh, yeah. snarky and yeah. Again, and he's like a little you, brother too. Like, you yeah. know, so you get that too. And that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you brought attention to this, uh, like the arguments that he has in his own mind and the way mm-hmm. the dreamer writes them. Mm-hmm. They're great. And I'm just, I just like being inside his head. It's nice being inside his head when he's not being a mood, mm-hmm. which he always is for me, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. But I, I think that the, um, I think the most angsty you get is in the third third part most definitely like when he leaves and he just doesn't know what to do um yeah he leaves the the motel room and stuff um and then i think you get a flip of it in the last one but it again like you do realize afterwards that it's dean being angsty but it's it's presented in a different way um so you get how they how the boys either show or hide their feelings to each other it's it's very distinct um distinct yeah, characterizations I, I think sam sam runs because he's scared dean runs to protect himself mm-hmm. dean's not scared of what's happening mm-hmm. he's just hurt whereas mm-hmm. sam's like oh fuck i didn't mean to do that mm-hmm. well i did but yeah. oh fuck yeah you know and it is they they run but for vastly different reasons and it's presented really differently. Because Sam is like, you know, well, what it, what is this going to mean? You know, have I have I ruined things? I think kind of a situation. And like you said, for Dean, it's more just why doesn't this person see what I'm what I mean with my actions? I think kind of thing. So it's that yeah. Why can't why can't they see that? You know, and um that's I mean, it, different. It comes it comes down to Dean's Dean's being very open. Dean's being like, I'm here, I'm available, mm-hmm. let's do this thing. But they both have that really crippling self-doubt of nobody wants me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Dean's Dean's putting it down, but Sam just cannot pick it up mm-hmm. because they don't neither of them believe in themselves. Yeah, the poor little the poor little boys. My gosh. Well fins. I just yeah. want to snuggle them with their babies. Yeah. Now just before we sort of wrap up this section and um there probably will be a reading from Sandra. I don't know what bit she's gonna pick. There'll be an exciting surprise for me as well. But I because this is this is the series that I like first interacted with Dreamer with. So I was commenting and I was being like please stop giving me blue balls Jesus fuck because when I found it it was finished. Obviously it was, but it wasn't all posted. So every, so for me, every, every time they went further, but didn't quite get there, I was like, fucking hell. And I, I remember vividly commenting to Dreamer that it was incredible how she kept giving me blue balls, even though they put out mm-hmm. every time. Mm-hmm. Sandra feels very differently about this. You know, I felt, I felt every, I wasn't, um, I didn't feel like I was deprived of anything, I guess, because of all the emotion and how each each part you knew was going to kind of build. Just by the way it was structured, you know it was a build up to something. So it was kind of like enjoying the the learning of what they and how they would go from like hand jobs to an amazing shower oh, scene. <laughs> <laughs> then um you know in bed over like you know uh oh this you know this guy was hitting on you sam and like rallying him up but then like pushing it to where then they're like blowjobs and anal play and jesus how are you getting teen to bend like that <laughs> all those guys of things and then like then the culmination of all of that where there's still this um this miscommunication but it's so hot up to that and then, yeah, I, I, I didn't feel, 
I didn't feel deprived, I guess. <laughs> it was still doing all the things it needed to do. <laughs> I'm just a demon. I'm just a demon. No, for me, it was because even though they went further physically every time, you could, like, Sam was still holding back emotionally. And after the blue and- balls because of the emotion, or like, so that's what the blue balls was about? No, it wasn't. Okay. It was uh, the emotion was a part of it, but it's because I knew there was more. Mm. I knew there was further for them to go, and they just didn't get there. You every just wanted time. it all. You just wanted. You just wanted it to keep going, yes. like just, just like a I, snowball, like no stopping. Just keep, just keep plowing through. Just give me the next bit. Just give me the next yeah. bit. Or did you want them to just do it all in one shot? I guess that's my question. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't like delayed gratification. I, I don't know, like but it. it's give it it's, all in all at once. But it's the because it's a series in and of itself. Like you could literally look at each one as a one shot, but the growth of the yeah, characters. Yeah, but that's, that's worse. That's worse. If I try and look at it as a one shot, I'm like, well, you could have gone all the way and you didn't. See, but and even- to me, a one shot can just explore lots of different parts of being really hot and intimate with these two characters. So I don't know. I I, I, I didn't. I didn't have. I didn't have. I don't know. I, I didn't. Balls. I didn't leave any installment unsatisfied, but then, I did leave. Then by definition, <laughs> no, because I balls. did leave them wanting more, and I was like, "There's more to be had here." Give, 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 give. It sounds like Up you wanted. The end. It sounds like you wanted multiple. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. So you did get one, but you wanted more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay. But okay. I think it's. I think it's because I could not. Uh, I don't know. What this is just about. this is just the most amazing conversation. People are going to be like, "What?" <laughs> I don't know what this says about me personally, but each of the acts that individually that happened were a precursor in my mind to sex. So when it stopped after that act, I was like, "What? Where's the rest of it?" What? Okay. But, but, but no. And I don't, I don't know. My brain is, my brain is wonky. I, th- I don't know. I, no, I think that's just, that's just individual preference. You know what I mean? So that's, it's totally valid. It's totally When you valid. go, when this comes out, re- <clears throat> uh, readers, listeners, I can't speak. What is wrong with me? Listeners, when this comes out, go read this. Come tell us. Were you like Sandra and satisfied at every installment? Or were you like me going, no more, gib? So here's the question, because how I was able to read, like, I was able to read, like, say, the parts individually and stop. If you'd had all four parts, you would have read it straight through. Yes. Okay. I did. I reread it straight through. I couldn't because when I was reading it, they weren't all out. Right. I had, like, one and then two. And then literally as I finished two, she posted three. So I went and read that immediately. Okay. And then... I think I did wait on far, but that was because it was longer and I I wanted to be able to dedicate the time to read it mm-hmm. instead of like reading a paragraph here and a paragraph there. Yeah. But no, I I would I would have I would have plowed through all of it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I I guess it like I, I I understand that. I also think that I the way I was able to read it, like I could read a couple parts and I was I knew there was like another part and I'm like I was satisfied with that that part of it, and I was like, okay, I can I can go back and and enjoy the the next bit and not have to like read straight through because sometimes it's just well, wh- like I said, I was reading this up until eleven o'clock last night. Like I got to get to bed, and I was like, no, I'm gonna finish <laughs> this because <laughs> once I got through chapter one of the fourth part, I was like, okay, because again, like you get all of this build up, and then there's. Um, and then she blue balls you right at the fucking end. You know, you so. cannot argue with me that the first chapter of the fourth installment yeah. does not leave you going fucking what? It 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 leaves you going fucking what? But <laughs> I can't say that I was like I was still okay with that part. Like I could have left it, but I didn't. So oh no, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. I put I commented on it and everything. I was like, why are you like this, Jesus? Aww. Please do not. See, but this was... is the same. This is the same thing. I have your new book, and I looked at the <clears> page count, and I was like, I can read that in an afternoon. Like that's not even a problem. So I haven't started it because uh-huh. I know I. Just I told like, you where. 
I think I told you where they finally like get to it too. I think I told you the chapter. And you were no, like, like, <laughs> like a like a three a three hundred page book. That's like an afternoon's worth of reading to me. That's like three, maybe four hours. That's pretty amazing, Carly. I read fast. Yeah, I, just I don't. I can't consume. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to be be careful, and I can't start it like. You know, like I can't get into bed and be like, "Oh, I'll read a chapter," because I'll stay up until three AM mm-hmm, until it's done. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm waiting until I know that I have an empty afternoon and I'm awake. Mm-hmm, I'm not going to mm-hmm. like get two chapters and be like, "I need to nap." Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that's just I just consume. Mm-hmm. I just consume. There's no, there's no patience. Hmm. There's no patience. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's an endless problem. <laughs> It's an endless problem. I don't get shit done. I just spent my life reading. I don't get shit done. But no, if we have sold you on the West series, which we absolutely have, of course, go and read it. Leave Dreamer some comments. Leave us some kudos. You know that we all love that. But when you're done, go check out her other series. She's done some one shots and stuff, but go check out her other series. It's the Sandman verse. My God, if you thought West was amazing, Sandman is going to blow your socks off, put them back on and blow them off again. It's fucking <laughs> incredible. It's amazing. It's hella long. So if you're in for like a really long, detailed thing, she got you. And again, nothing's wasted. There's no part of it where you're like, I'm bored. Move on to the next bit. You're not skimming over anything. You're in. So go read West. I know that you'll love it. And then when you're done with West, go read Sandman. And if you have a bit of time in between, go read her other stuff. She's honestly, it's amazing. Yeah, I hype her up in exactly the same way. I hype up, go read everything Sandra's ever written. Go read everything Dee's ever written. Gold star, favorite authors. Go read all their stuff. I, I just wanted to say, too, thank you. Um, thanks, for, thanks for alerting me. And thank you to um, Runaway Dreamer for posting your stuff on AO3. For those of us that have never dabbled into live journal um it's just it's great to have i guess this archive right that people find and move their fiction over because it's just there are some um fanfic writers that i think are so much better than actual authors that are like making you know that are actually like uh, getting published um by it's just it's it's amazing that you take the time to share that talent with us and our love of the characters. So it is very much appreciated your time and effort. And I'm sure Carly has said all the things um, in comments, but I, I definitely kudos and I emailed um, the email dreamer just to let, let her know. Thank you so much. It's just, it was, it was a really, really great piece just amazing when i'm bad by runaway dreamer rating is explicit no archive warnings apply category is male male fandom supernatural relationship dean winchester slash sam winchester characters dean winchester sam winchester additional tags early in canon Brotherly platonic handjobs. Who do they think they're kidding? First kiss. This is part three of the West series. Summary. Originally posted on Live Journal, May 6, 2012. A sleazy comment from a guy at a bar has Dean curious. God only knows the last time a curious Dean ended them up in anything but trouble. Notes. Bringing my old fix over from Live Journal. This was originally posted on the 6th of May, 2012. Please enjoy. Baited by Novak Ev, to whom I am still very grateful. Title from the May West quote When I'm good, I'm very good. When I'm bad, I'm better. You got a purdy mouth, boy. Shut up, Dean. Shoving the door open, Sam stomps into the motel room. He doesn't bother turning on the light, just stumbles his way in and hopes Dean does it before he trips over something. 
Dean's still laughing when the room lights up, so Sam gets smacked right in the balls with the bright expression on his brother's face. It makes his heart stutter in a discomforting sort of way, which has him regretting that third beer. Stupid Dean. Stupid Dean and going to stupid bars. Not that... Okay, to be fair, it's not like Dean had been making him drink, so it's not totally his fault, at least not directly. He'd put a few of his own away. After all, it wasn't like one of them had just died or come back to life. Not like they'd found out angels are real or that another high-level demon is out to get them. Nothing had happened that would ordinarily prompt a round of heavy drinking, basically. And Sam had never really bothered to say he didn't want anything to drink when they got to the bar. And hell, Sam is sure safer on beer than hard liquor. So, it's not Dean's fault. Technically, it's just that, well... It's just that Dean gets all pink and smiley when he's not trying to drown his sorrows. He gets all sweet. He gets pink and smiley and sweet when he's tipsy. And Sam just can't handle that shit without some alcohol in his system. You know what they do to guys like you in prison, right? I will kill you in your sleep, Dean. Sam intones, throwing himself with more force than is probably safe, necessary into the rickety chair at the spindly table in the grimy kitchen nook. Bitch, you will not. I'm too handsome to die in anything but a blaze of glory. Pretty is more like it. Sam thinks sulkily as he boots up his laptop and tries not to listen to the sounds of Dean shucking his outer layers. Thwomp goes the jacket. Swoosh go the overshirts. Clunk goes the handgun on the nightstand. Not that he's listening. I never said anything about how I'd kill you. He points out. Whatever, hot lips. Dean chuckles as he finishes taking off his boots and throws himself onto his bed in a groan of springs. He lets out an exaggerated sigh of comfort. Eyes on the computer screen, Sam pointedly ignores the small part of himself that's wishing Dean is holding onto this so stubbornly because he really does think Sam has a nice mouth. His pessimistic side insists he's deluding himself. Some asshole had tried to pick him up at the bar earlier, is the thing. He'd come over with a confident swagger, all eerily pale blue eyes, muscles on his muscles, and not Dean, okay, reasonably attractive. Sam hadn't been even remotely interested, but he didn't want to be rude or anything so he'd let the guy try a line before turning him away. Problem was, the line had been, I'd love to see your mouth wrapped around my cock by the end of the night. What do you say? Sam hadn't had a single thing to say to that, quite frankly. Unfortunately, the guy had taken his dumbfounded silence for consideration and continued. Come on, beautiful. I bet we could rock each other's worlds. You sure look like you're packing something serious down there. The way his eyes had locked on Sam's crotch like a starving man sniffing out a four-course meal had been more than a little perturbing. Before Sam had a chance to shut the presumptuous dirt bag down hard, the smell of leather in Dean's cologne had filled his nose as Dean stepped up behind him. He'd wrapped his arms around Sam's waist, laid his head on Sam's shoulder, and nuzzled in behind his ear, smile pressed right against his skin. The smile was gone when Dean looked up, though, replaced by something hard and spine-melting dangerous that set his jaw like steel. You're right, he'd said, voice a silken purr. He's packing something real serious. Shame you'll never find out what. His arms had tightened around Sam's ribs, hands pressed into his belly like a fire Sam could feel through every layer of his shirts. The look should probably have scared the guy's balls right up into his body, but still, he'd looked dubiously between them. That might have been Sam's fault, though, since he was gaping at the side of Dean's face like a slack-jawed idiot. 
it didn't really lend credence to Dean's possessive claim, you know. A tick had started in Dean's cheek by the time the stranger averted his gaze and walked away, gait stiff and offended. The tick disappeared when Dean turned his face back toward Sam's neck and let out a high-pitched giggle, totally a giggle, breath, obviously trying to restrain his amusement for the benefit of their audience. Sam had stayed very carefully still as Dean sighed a warm little puff of breath into the fine hair at the nape of his neck before sliding his hands to Sam's waist and squeezing lightly. He patted once and then let go. Ready to go, Sam I am? Sammy. Sambo. Samalama Ding Dong. Earth to Samantha. What, Dean? Sam eventually whines. He doesn't look up from his notebook, scribbling out an old memo in the margin and replacing it with the updated factoid from their latest case. You ever actually given a dude a hummer before? Spinning around in the chair so fast he nearly gives himself whiplash, Sam gapes at Dean. What? Dean shrugs and stretches out on the bed, folding his hands under his head and crossing his legs at the ankle. Just what that asshole at the bar said. Made me wonder. He explains, a guileless look on his face like he's asked something as simple as the time and expects a likewise answer. The flickering glow from the TV casts the room alternately into shadow and soft light. It cuts into the angles of Dean's face, and the definition of his bunched biceps is accentuated by the short sleeves of his Henley. Sam shudders and looks away, but the laptop screen is a mass of confusing, blurred letters as he tries to suppress the warmth in his gut. Sam, come on, dude. It was just a question. Ain't like it's taboo around here, exactly. Dean chuckles, the insinuation thick. Which, yeah, is true enough. When you've been trading hand jobs for years, the topic of sex doesn't stay sacred for long. So Sam doesn't know why the question feels so personal. Kicking up a stink would probably be weirder than just answering at this point. Couple times. He mutters under his breath almost hoping Dean won't hear and will just let the conversation drop. Another part of him thrills at the idea of Dean knowing that about him. Yeah? When was that? The words are casual. So carefully, pointedly casual. Sam swallows through a dry throat and looks at Dean out of the corner of his eye. Dean's got his gaze trained on the TV like goddamn Mori Povich, or QVC is just fascinating. The apparent disinterest doesn't mesh with the way he's utterly motionless, belly hardly rising and falling, with tightly controlled breaths. It makes Sam sweat. What, you want names and dates? He asks, just to be a pain in the ass. And sure, maybe to see if he can get some kind of reaction. Dean casts his eyes over to Sam raising a brow. Just curious, man. You don't have to share with the class if you don't want to. If his eyes weren't so intent and his jaw so stiff, Sam might believe him. What he doesn't know is why Dean cares so much. Clearing his throat, he breaks Dean's gaze and looks back down at his notes. Last time was in college. Huh. Dean says and Sam can't resist looking back up. The thoughtful expression on Dean's face shifts into something darker, eyelids lowering. Been a while, then. Yeah, I guess. So? Think it's anything like riding a bike? The words don't make sense immediately, but when they do, Sam feels like he's been punched in the gut. Dean can't seriously be suggesting what Sam thinks he is. Can he? Because there's crossing the line, and there's crossing the line. And theoretically, Sam's been on board with that for a while now. Since when is Dean? Sam's cheeks feel hot enough to be glowing, and his ears are about the same. 
Dean staring at him with a grin tugging at the corners of his mouth, but it just makes his expression dirtier. Um, Sam says cleverly, wiping sweaty palms on his jeans. Are you saying you want me to... Coughing, he gestures vaguely, unable to quite say the words. Well, I'm sure not saying I don't want you to. Dean smirks, pushing up onto his elbows. The sturdy but graceful line of his body calls to Sam's eyes for a thorough once-over, but he doesn't indulge the desire, instead scrubbing his fingers through the mess of his hair and shaking his head. That's not really... That's not an answer, Dean, he says. At least, it's not an answer Sam can accept. He feels like he's been on tenterhooks with Dean for years over this. This thing between them. But in actual fact, it's been less than a couple months. In comparison to the slow descent Sam's taken into realization of the way he feels for Dean, everything's now happening at the speed of light. He wishes more than ever that he could see what's going on inside Dean's head. Dean looks inexplicably embarrassed for a moment, but he recovers with a grin. Then yeah, Sam, I'm saying I want you to. He repeats Sam's hand gesture, over the top, and not a little mocking. He's not nasty about it, though. He's just being Dean. A tiny bubble of hysterical amusement bursts out of Sam despite himself. Right, he says. He looks at his laptop and the scattered reference papers. The work is nothing that can't wait but he makes himself seem contemplative to avoid looking too eager. He glances between Dean and the table. Did you want me to now, or... And I probably won't end up reading the the Sandman and and her other things. Um, How long is the Sandman now? Is it done? I can't remember. Did you say it's... Okay. Nope. Uh, let me. It's it's long. It's like I think it's like a hundred and sixty thousand words. Oh wow! Something, okay, something like that. Let me find it. It's long. You will. I know you, and I know how you read. You will have to read that in um. Yeah, it's a hundred, a hundred and sixty nine, well, thousand <laughs> words split over four, um, four works. So I think. The first one is the longest, and then the second... So the first one is, like, 74, then the second one is 37, and then we've got one one little, like, timestamp that's, like, just shy of 2,000, and then the fourth one is, like, 56,000. And now that one is, a, is much darker, at least you said in the beginning. The same yes. Man. Okay. Yes. Maybe that's why, too, I think, with the West series... There were there were high stakes, but they were high emotional stakes, and it wasn't as it wasn't necessarily like a soulless Sam or a demon Dean. It was just it was them, you know, like inherently mm-hmm. at the base level. And I think that's why I guess why I loved it so very much. I'm thinking about now our two recommendations. I think they very much lean into the whole romance trope stuff. Um, yeah. So connection has been made. I was wondering how I was going to do that. But I think they both lean into that. It's um it's really great. It's really great. I'll I'll, I'll try it. It's it you you know the darker stuff takes me a little takes me a little while to kind of get into even when I read even though I do I've read some dark dean stuff but it's still it's kind of like you understand that there's a it's a part of them being explored but it's like I just don't want to stay in there too long. <laughs> like I want to get I want to get mm. past that. And you said that happens in the Sandman a it, little bit. But we can does, talk yeah. about it a little bit more maybe another time. Okay. Yeah. If you if you get if you get into it, we can mm-hmm. come back and we mm-hmm. can have a chat about that. But mm-hmm. like I would be remiss not to warn you, not to warn anybody that's maybe gonna jump on that, that it does start off, you know, solar sam, non con, things like that. Mm-hmm. But if you get through that, it's it's adorable. It's okay. cute as fuck. It's okay. cute as fuck. It's still, it's like, it's still kinky. Uh, you know, it still, still hits all, all my buttons and things like that. But it's cute. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Mm-hmm. You just gotta, 
and you just got to get through that first bit. I'm like, I like dark stuff. And even I commented on it and was like, oh my God, this is like, it's making my stomach turn. Mm, okay. It's so dark. Mm-hmm. But again, if you, once you get through, and it's not like solid, it's like, it kind of like jumps about. Okay. You, you'll see when you read it, it jumps about. So okay. you think it's over and then like a flashback or a memory will happen and you're like, oh, damn it. Okay. But uh, it's, it's so well worth it. It really is worth it. Okay. I and highly what, recommend. And West is very linear in terms of like how things are progressing throughout. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. No, I'm willing, I'm willing to give it a shot. Like I said, if it's, if it's a, um, if it's a great, great writer, then um, usually I, I'll, I'll give their, I'll give their other things I maybe normally wouldn't dabble in a try. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. So yeah, check it out. And don't forget to come and, you know, chat to us on Twitter and tell us, did you feel like you had blue balls or were you perfectly satisfied after every installment? Let us know. I need to know if I'm weird, guys. I mean, I know I'm weird, but mm-hmm. I need to know if I'm weird in this specific area as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we mm-hmm. will we will leave that there. Obviously, there will be links to West in the description and to Dreamers, like AO3 page and stuff like that. But Sandra has like a theme and a tie and everything. So I just I just me. came I just came up with it because it was it was definitely um a lot of romance, a lot of romance tropes. Um yeah, yeah. so tell me, tell me, tell me what you have. Because the well, tags, I'm looking I at the tags going, why haven't you read this? I don't have any this is not going to be as long of a discussion. She has think, no notes. Because I have no <laughs> notes. But it's it's a really good story, and I came across it. It's called um Fudge Buddies. Uh, it's by Jay Scribbles. It was part of an SPN media big bang uh, for 2020, the collection. So it's basically one uh-huh. of those. There's a there's an art piece and then um, a a writer, you know, going off of the art piece that was that was submitted. And it's Dean and Donna. And I I really had canon wise. I think if I have a pairing. Um, for Dean, I really do like the idea of Dean with Donna. And I think we've talked about this uh, yes. numerous times. The one thing I'll say about this author is they've posted 25 SPN fanfics on AO3. All except for two are Destiel. These, the other two are Dean slash Donna. They make me want to read some of their Destiel stuff. I don't know if I will or not, but it's like I've got this, this author the author's writing style is very easy conversational very uh very fun the the way they get all the different characters and they throw every almost every character imaginable in um SPN i think has a little has a little cameo or has a uh has a part Aww. in the whole overall story um uh-huh. it starts out so this is probably where dreamer will have exited because it starts out uh, around season 11 um mm-hmm. so if you have not gone past that in your spn watch uh, you may not want to know and not that it's that i don't think it's very spoilery say but it's basically um at the end of season 11 there's a there's the big bad right that's kind of figured out and eliminated and a part of the big bad does something for mm-hmm. Dean. And it's really just referenced as just a, a side note, but it doesn't really have necessarily any bearing on the overall story, but it's basically a friends with benefits. So it's canon divergent after uh, season 11. Uh, in the tags, it's also listed, uh, it's listed bisexual Dean and unrequited Destiel. Um, but the unrequited Destiel is not in the way the show portrayed it. It's kind of the other way. Um, and again, I don't want to say too much in case that spoils if somebody's listening. But uh-huh. um, if you get what if you get where I'm if I'm going with this with Carly, like it's it's not what we were shown in terms of unrequited. It's yeah. the other way. Yeah. Um yeah. so the premise is <laughs> uh Dean and, and Donna both uh on their own are having relationship issues. Um, Dean's not very the most romantic, shall we say. And we've talked about this before too. <laughs> and has been like, you know, attempting to date, like regular dates, like, you know, with with 
someone and it ends up this this dating has turned into a relationship that he had no idea was actually a relationship kind of thing and so he's like flabbergasted that that was what was expected from this this person um yeah donna's with one of the dugs this might be the second dug i can't i can't i can't keep track of how many dugs. i think i think it's there were two dogs. I think this is the second dog. Which yeah. kind of the second dog is really like so the second dog in this is really a dick. And I didn't get that vibe from second dog in the show. Um the way it's Maybe presented. It's a mashup of dogs. Yeah, it could it could be. So again, I'm not quite not quite clear on that part. But it's and that could be a part of the canon divergent aspect of it too. But the um they they just are having no luck, uh, Dean and Donna relationship wise, and mm-hmm. um, Jody Jody comes in. Uh, you see Claire. Claire is really funny in this. Claire is just like so fun with Jody and their dynamic, and basically like Claire's like, well, you should just you should just find a friends with benefits deal. And um, what ends up happening is. Uh, Dean and Donna like get together on for a hunt and you could tell there's kind of like Dean's always kind of thought that Donna was like the bee's knees or whatever. And, you know, Donna's always thought, you know, that Dean's kind of hot or whatever, but never like Donna encompasses all that I am with a romance uh, protagonist where you don't feel like anybody would find you um, or at least like somebody like Dean stature, right? Like, wouldn't mm-hmm. find you attractive or whatever. I think that's why I love Donna so much because as much of a badass as she is, like she's a sheriff, she's a great hunter, but she has all these insecurities that she we identify with, with on the daily, yeah. daily basis that I identify with. And I'm just like, but you've got so much to offer. And it's like, Dean sees that, but Dean's like, well, why would she want, she, why would she want me? I'm a, I'm a fucking mess, you know, I, or whatever. There's mm-hmm. a, um, I will say, if you just like laughing like out loud, the conversations, what ends up happening, they have this come to Jesus moment, like in the middle of like a hunt, they're like (laughs) doing this ghost thing and they're the battle and like the way they're like talking to each other. And like, they're so compatible when they hunt and the, 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 the action, the dialogue, and then like the aftermath where they're just sitting on, I think, baby's hood eating outside of a convenience store and then they're just like yeah like you know i just i just need somebody like friends with benefits something simple where the other person's not expecting anything out of me just like here we go let's just be there for each other when we need it and then they just look at each other and have this aha moment and it's just like uh, oh, right. why don't we just why don't we just give this a try and they're like putting together all these rules and different things like that. So it's definitely like friends with benefits, but then the friends have feelings and that's like pretend boyfriend scenarios thrown oh in and all of this stuff, like with the family, like he's got to go meet the family. Um, but there's all of this miscommunication. We love our miscommunication of people not expressing their feelings in the middle of all of this. There are some hot, 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 scenes between Dean and Donna literally because they're like there's a fire going on and they're just like sweating like just pigs but like you know like you know but but then it's so it's so like yeah (laughs) there's a there's a spot where um Donna gives Dean a birthday present where she's dressed up as a nurse and he gets to wear uh, a cowboy hat and I think assless chaps, I believe, might be a thing. <laughs> there may I be did, some, yeah. I saw the tag cowboy and nurse role play. Yeah. And I'm like, those don't traditionally go together, but I'm in yeah. for it. I'm there in was for apparently it. pegging, but you don't actually get like full on like that from like Aww. from uh Donna doing the deed to Dean. There's anal. Um, yeah, it's just phone sex carly there's a really hot yep. phone sex scene i just saw that um, talk and i was like oh that's one of my favorites i love that yeah so i mean it's it's definitely like a romance where you you know there's going to be like a happy ending but it's like how do they get to their feelings yeah. for that and i feel like that really falls in line with kind of like how west was doing it there's just so much angst you know dean doesn't think he's worth it Aww. dean thinks you know donna could do better uh donna thinks the same fucking thing it's just like jesus 
<laughs> guys, please go. Somebody just talk to somebody else. Fuck it out. And there's yes. um, Celine is in here too. Uh, again, Sam is just like Sam and Dean's um interactions are so funny. Dean and Cass's interactions are very kind of sad and what could have been thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I see. I see. It's tagged bisexual Dean. Yeah. So I kind of see. I kind of see why that's striving as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's just. Yeah, that's like rom com shenanigans is one of the tags, and it's so, it's it's so very on point to that. Uh, I just know I, I love. Dean and Donna together. I think they're kind of yes. like, you know, I, I just, he, he respects her. Right. And I think that that, that respect lends itself to safety and security and being like, well, um, even if you're going to try new and exciting and fun things, there's a level of respect there that it balances out all the things she never got um, in her past relationships with all these Dougs that you know she's worth it yeah. and i will say there's another the other one that jay scribbles writes that's dean and donna is also very sweet and kind of they've, they're have they already doing a friends with benefits thing it's not as long but it's also i think it's revolves around christmas and the get the boys getting the boys getting oh. christmas and this this yeah. kind of has that this kind of has that feel too where like dean gets to see what it's like to be part of a family like donna even though donna's family is like a fucking mess but still like garbage gets yeah. to see that um but not like with the dad the dad is sweet um and so there's uh there's all of that all those feel good give the boys what they deserve kind of thing that's that's in here there's so many great things i want you to read it so that then we could like discuss just off you know yes off but it's because there's i want to know what you think of the phone sex scene definitely um yes. but love me some phone sex but like how how like free donna is with dean is very refreshing mm. and how dean is kind of like surprised by it in some respects like i think he wants to treat her almost like um a little china doll in the beginning but then she's like oh no i'm here for all of this and it's just like okay like how you can open yourself up to someone when you trust them, I think. And it's not just about, it's not just about what am I doing to make this person happy, but this person wants me to be happy and satisfied as well kind Mm. of scenario. And I think that's, I think they both struggle with that, Dean and Donna, and they get to explore that. Oh yeah, it's just I'm it's, well in for this now. I'm I mean it's definitely well it's, it's long. It's it's like it's like novel length. So I think your the West series was like what 40, 40 something words. So this one is this one is 66. You know, it's like it's like a rom it's like a romance novel, um, romance yeah. novel length, but you could probably get through that in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, it might take me two. It might take me two. No, I will um I definitely will. We're going to be, it was like it had caught my attention but i wanted i wanted you to sell me on it first it's so fun though it's very fun like i said the way the writer leans into the comedy of certain situations the fight scene is just hilarious when they when they're like when they're battling and talking in between it it's just like you can see it and it's just it's just great um so there's a lot of like there's a lot of visuals. Too. I just, I just imagining like sweaty Dean, like by a fireplace. I'm just like, yes. Give me yes. All, all of this. this. Give immediate. <laughs> immediately. Yes. Fully on board. Then, yeah. Phone sex, like Dean on the other end. It's just like, mm-hmm. and of course then it gets angsty and gets messed up, but at, at least that part of it is good. Um, <laughs> until they, until they mess up with their feelings and don't, don't express them. But Yeah. Fudge Buddies by Jay Scribbles. Rating is explicit. No archive warnings apply. Category is female male. Fandom is supernatural. Relationship. Donna Hanscom slash Dean Winchester. Character. Donna Hanscom, Dean Winchester, Claire Novak, Jody Mills, Castiel, Sam Winchester, Eileen Leahy. Additional tags. Canon Divergent, Friends with Benefits, Bisexual Dean, 
Unrequited Destiel, SPNMBB 2020, Pretend Dating, Canon Compliant Up to Season 11 Finale, Smut, Fun and Realistic Sex, Pegging, Anal, Blowjobs, Romance, Phone Sex, Donna's Sister Fat Shames Her, Miscommunication, Happy Ending, Rom-Com Tropes, Catching Feelings, Rom-Com Shenanigans, Based on Friends with Benefits Movie, Background Saline, Cowboy and Nurse Roleplay. And this is part of the SPN Media Big Bang 2020 collection. Summary When Amara gifted Dean with the one thing he needed the most, Dean didn't figure he'd walk out of that garden to absolute bupkis. How rude was that? Not even a limo. Just Donna picking him up in her bent out of shape truck and offering a high five for saving the world from impending doom. Again. Dean tries his hand at dating, only to be publicly dumped because he's emotionally unavailable. Whatever the hell that means. Fuck dating. Dating isn't a thing he can put on his short list of talents. Bored to tears and totally not lonely, Dean decides he's good with the ongoing intimate relationship he has with his right hand, anyway. Three hours away, Donna is dumped by another Doug. How could this happen? She's done everything right. She's done everything she hadn't done with the first Doug. Frustrated and hurt, she swears off dating forever, at least until she learns about fuck buddies. From that, Donna kicks off a casual fling with none other than Dean Winchester. They have sex, laugh, eat pizza, hunt. It's perfect. It's the most perfect, no-strings-attached arrangement. No love. Just some kinky boinking involving cowboy boots and nurse scrubs. And no one is catching feelings. Right? Fudge. Notes. Welcome to my submission for this year's SPN Media Big Bang 2020, based on the 2011 Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis movie, Friends with Benefits. Huge, huge, huge thank you to Son of a Bitch SPN family, Ellen of Oz, and Mal Muses for being betas and alphas and cheerleaders and amazing people. This fic is no longer a mess of commas and repetitive words and writer's tears because of them. They're doing the Lord's work, you feel? Mega thanks to my artist partner for this bang, NC Dover 1285. Please check out their art master list. Please enjoy this lighthearted and angsty at times, come on, it ain't a rom-com without some miscommunication, fic about two idiots who fall in love and don't even know it until it's too late. Enjoy. It's just that, Dean paused his rant to fire off salt rounds right into their ghost's chest. I'm not built for long-term relationships. People die around me. I, oh, Donna, behind you. Donna's hair whipped him in the face as she spun on the spot, ducking to the ground as Dean raised his sawed off and blasted the second ghost away, the salt rounds shattering a picture frame behind him on the brick wall of the apartment they'd broken into. Good call, Donna said jumping to her feet and brandishing the iron bar she had in her hands. She and Dean ran into the next room, sliding on ectoplasm and catching themselves on the back of a love seat. Two ghosts materialized on their side of them, and Dean and Donna pushed off each other's backs, launching into their individual offensive strikes. Donna cried out in a strangled grunt as she swung her weapon straight through the ghost, who disappeared with a scream and a puff of smoke. Behind her, Dean was shoved into the couch by the spirit of a man in a medical gown, going head over heels over the back of the love seat when his knees got caught. Dean, Donna cried out, turning on the spot, her eyes wide. You okay? Dean got to his feet, brushing off the non-existent dirt on his knees. No, I mean, I think I am. I've been rejected before, but I think she could have been nicer about it. Like, send me a text or something. I meant falling, Donna clarified, walking around the couch and gesturing to the wall they'd smashed to pieces ten minutes earlier. You think the bones are in there? Should we salt and burn them? Nodding, and then shaking his head, Dean choked out. Oh, 
Yeah, right. <sighs> yep. That's where the crazy doctor said he'd stash their bones. I mean, right? Do you still have the pages from his diary? Donna reached in her back pocket, yanking out the crumpled old paper they'd found in the library's rare book stacks. Uh, room 4B. It's where his office used to be. Yep, yep. I feel like we should have confirmed that before we took a couple of sledgehammers to the wall. But if the blueprints were right, then they'll be in there. You'll never banish us. This is our resting place. We will... The ghosts who appeared on their side of Donna and ripped the paper in her hand to shreds, shrieked and pushed her to the ground, one kicking the back of her knees, the other tangling their mangled fingers in her hair. But with two blasts of salt rounds from Dean, Donna gasped as they released her, their hands disappearing. When she jerked her head up, Dean's eyes were narrowed, and the end of his gun was smoking. Thanks. Saved my keister. Donna breathed, giving Dean a thumbs up. She picked up the iron bar she dropped and pointed at the wall. Let salt and burn their remains before my ass gets kicked any more, and... And you know... Dean went on, waggling his gun at the ceiling and trotting over to the duffel they dropped near the broken-down wall earlier, bending over to pull out a bag of salt and some gasoline. Now that I think about it more, Sam's able to compartmentalize because he got out of the life, you know? He went to college and got to learn about relationships like regular people. Dude probably got to experiment, you know? Donna stood behind him, blinking her weapons at her side. Dean looked over his shoulder at her as he got up, grunting as he heaved a gallon of gasoline at his hip, resting it there as he added, so he can separate the life and learn how to do relationships. Me? I was raised in a car, and my role models for ideal relationships were my parents, who fought a lot when I was a kid, and then a bunch of chicks my dad hooked up with on hunts. Even Bobby's wife was dead as fuck. So really, I have no business getting into long-term jack shit, right? Donna walked up beside him, leaning against the wall, her arms crossed over her chest. Sing it, sister. Shaking gasoline behind the wall through the gaping, ruined hole they'd created with sledgehammers earlier, Dean laughed bitterly. Fuck it, I'll just kick it on my own, and fuck once in a while, and then die alone. A true hunter, you know? A fate for a hunter like everyone always warned me. I'm just pissed because... He shook his head, accepting the bag of salt as Donna passed it to him. Like, Amara is God's sister. She should have known the thing I need the most was like, I don't know, like nine lives or some shit. Like a cat. Or a gun with unlimited ammo. Or superhuman strength like Superman. Something useful for hunting. Not like a normal-ass life without cosmic bullshit. I'm Dean fucking Winchester, he said, looking at Donna with wide eyes, pausing in his task to purse his lips and poke himself in the chest. I'm destined to deal with cosmic bullshit. It's kind of my shtick. His brows went up. Lighter? Oh, Donna exclaimed with a small laugh. Right. After patting at her pockets, Donna tugged out a Zippo Dean had given her earlier in order to start a small fire on the main floor that would distract building management. As Dean set aside the salt and red plastic gallon jug, Donna leaned on the intact part of the brick wall and smiled softly. I'm right there with you, Dean. Not on the cosmic bull poop front, but, you know. She shrugged, sighing at the ceiling. The being alone thing. I think maybe that's best. I'm too busy. Too jaded. Dean tossed the lighter into the hole in the wall and exhaled through his nose, eyes looking far away, as the flames caught somewhere in the walls a few floors down. Still, the fire glowed orange through the hole. They both stared wistfully into it. Somewhere in the distance, they heard roars of rage and sorrow. In the apartment, the air shifted, the stench of fear lifting away. The ghosts were gone. I think we got them. Dean muttered. Donna nodded, gazing into the flickering warm light. Gonna miss falling in love. That was the best part, I think.
Dean ducked to shove their supplies back into their duffel, saying with a snort, Yeah, um, I mean, no. Well, kinda. Wait, no. It sucks. It hurts. It... The ear-splitting, roaring sirens from fire trucks deafened them for a moment, and both Dean and Donna physically recoiled as they drove by. The fire engine was heading in the opposite direction, back towards the building they'd just partially set aflame. Dean was still going on. His rant barely ended. And, you know, feelings suck. Falling in love? It sucks, he declared, adjusting the strap of their bag over his shoulder. His eyes narrowed. Amen to that, Donna said with a chuckle as she patted at her pockets and found a granola bar. Famished, she wrenched at the wrapper and took a big bite. I had a crush on this one other person. Well, not really a person, but, well, kinda. Dean went quiet only to quickly step aside, making room for police who were running towards the building. Anyway, he continued shaking his head. I had a crush on this person for three whole fucking years, and nothing came of it. Because they had feelings for me, and I had feelings for them. Were these hunting years? Dean shot Donna a sidelong glance and laughed. Donna, they were all hunting years. Just checking. Go on. They turned a corner into an alleyway where the Impala was parked at the end, shining at them in the mid-afternoon high sun. But we knew we could never act on them because shit would get ruined between us. It sucked. But sex? Dean's eyebrows shot up, and he chuckled in a way that might have been creepy to anyone else. Sex is easier. You do a little flirty, do a little dancey, maybe get a little drunk if you're in the mood, then boom, in, out, done. Donna tossed her head back, moaning, her messy ponytail flapping out against her back. Lifting her face to the sky, she groaned. Oh, I miss sex. Doug and I, the first one, she clarified. Used to have sex all the time before we got married. Then it was, oh, you're too fat. Oh, you love to deep throw cookie dough, but not me. And then other Doug never wanted to have sex at all. It was always cuddles and trivia night with his boys. And before I got a chance to make a move, he'd been asleep. I just miss it so much, you know? They reached the Impala, and Donna rested her hip against the side as Dean wrenched open the trunk, swinging their supplies into the trunk. Why is sex so complicated? Dean asked, slamming the trunk closed, his face pinched. Feelings always happen. And then I gotta leave, and I get guilty, and Sam gives me shit for never calling girls back. But that just complicates stuff, and... They both opened their doors and swung onto the front bench, the Impala buckling under their weight. Yeah, Donna agreed with gusto. Claire was telling me about casual sex, and I think that's a great idea. Dean started the car, but glanced over at Donna with his brows raised and a smirk. Claire? I always said she was a smart kid. Donna grabbed a microfiber cloth from the glove compartment and began rubbing at some ectoplasm she'd gotten on her jeans as Dean pulled out of the alleyway, stopping to wait for more fire trucks to zoom by them in the street. I gotta find me someone who just wants to have sex with me and not expect anything more, she pondered. I am not in a place for a relationship right now, but orgasms? I could do with a couple of orgasms. I just need someone who will give me that and be direct about what they want. None of that awkward dancing around. It's all, it's all good. Like I said, I might, I might, I might read some of their Destiel stuff, but I'm not sure. I don't know what I it is, quick, Carly. I don't know what it is about that. I had a that. quick flick through mm-hmm. um, and some of their Destiel like tags and summaries and stuff. I was like, yeah, all right. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I um, I was I was interested in that. So yeah. I definitely think this is going to be somebody, somebody I'm going to uh, going to go and have a look at. I have to say, while we were talking about Dean and Donna, like 
I don't particularly ship anybody on the show, but if I was going to, and if it had to be a heterosexual ship, Dean and Donna, Sam and Jody, all the way down the line, like a hundred percent. So Sam just... and Jody over like Sam, Sam and Eileen or Sam and Rowena, or do you like that, that um, you like a Sam and Jody idea? I like, I like the idea of Sam and Jody. Okay. I have the, I have this idea, right? That like, cause Dean and Donna strike me as very similar, you know, like a, a, a bit hedonistic, you know, like, they're just kind of like, well, nobody's ever gonna love me, I think but it's I'll have the a nice food time thing too. Like they so enjoy food, food together, well. and they yeah. have they have scenes like that too, where it's just like they're just they're just they they go to town on some waffles, man, and it's <laughs> that's it. But they just they both they both strike me as like you know just a little a little bit freer mm-hmm. people, whereas Sam and Jody are like really kind of straight laced, reserved, really need yeah. to be in mm-hmm. control. Mm-hmm. And I just I just have this idea of of Sam and Jody getting together and her taking him to bed and being like a fucking hard dom mm, and him okay. just not having a clue what to do with it because she's just this tiny woman and wow. him being like fucking all right <laughs> I don't know it just like it's not something I'm, uh, I won't never say never but it's not something like I want to write or anything I just I just have this idea of like Sam going into this thinking that you know it's just just going to be good sex and like you know, maybe it's going to be vanilla, but it's going to be fine. And she's cracking out not. like leather and whips. And he's like, Bloody I hell, feel right. like that's been done, right? Somebody, if anybody's like read that, I'm sure Sam. Link Jody, them all. Link yeah, me. I'm sure. I have a feeling that that's, you can't be the only one that has that vibe and has not. Do you not get that, that. Ki- that kind of vibe from Jody though? Yeah. Like it's, it's controlled, but it's, is she so tightly controlled because there's something. Well, because I think too, she's control. always taking care of everybody else too. And it's like, I think she wants, she still wants that control. Yeah. But in the bedroom as well. And if Sam's up for it. Oh, he um, would be. <laughs> of course, yeah, I would argue be. Dean would be as well. <laughs> no, see, I don't, I don't ship Jody and Dean. I can't no, no, no. I just all. mean like, I just mean like a one shot. <laughs> no, I just in my still, head. still, still no. Like Jody and Dean is like, Aileen and Dean, Eileen and Dean. I just mm-hmm. can't see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I get that. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. No. I mean, I'm sure somebody's explored it though. So I would be, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, has. probably. It's just that's just not for me. But no, I'm like, I I can like, you know, I will go down with this alien ship. I will. I love them. They're cute as fuck. Yeah. I definitely, I definitely think Rowena and Sam were were getting up to something yeah. behind the bookshelves a hundred percent. Yeah. But I would, if you pushed me and were like, you have to ship somebody, it would be. It would I be Sam think and that Jody. leans into the student teacher thing again, which I guess kind of like falls in line with if we're going Sam and Jody, um, I think Sam and Rowena, like, I think there's that Sam would kind of want to learn from the both of them. And that transfers yeah. over into lots of different, different yeah. areas, I think. So. Yeah. No, I yeah. just like fully hard top Jody. <laughs> like leather and whips and thing. And Sam is just like, I don't know what I expected, but it wasn't this. <laughs> and like it's fully on board. Yeah. And then then you then you get into all the kind of like it's a nice little surprise. Okay. Size differences and things that would occur from that. And you know how much I love being in power over someone of Sam's size. And I'm like, mm-hmm, yes, I'm mm-hmm. going to tie him up and do everything. Mm-hmm. And it just, mm-hmm. just really into it. Yeah. I'm just really into it. Because she's so mild-mannered. Yeah. She's, she's a hard-ass, but like, she's not, she's not mean. You know, yeah. she's like, she's like, gets her mom face on and stuff. Right, right, right. And I'm with that. And I just feel like, fucking hard top behind closed doors. Hard dom. Yeah. Where I think... I guess like Dean and Donna, I just see the playfulness with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you could see how easy that would translate into it's them in the bedroom. That's definitely explored in in this um Yeah. This I story. feel like I feel like Dean and Donna come together in a in a very different way. Mm-hmm. And like I don't want to make it about food, but like because it's not, but it's like enjoyment of pleasurable things that they share. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, but I will. Uh, yeah, no, I get it because I'll say that. Um, thoughts like a minefield, Incog Ninja just put out a Dean and Donna, like a part one, 
And I was just like, oh, oh my yeah, God. I'm like, I can't, I, I can't wait to read more of this. And it was basically like, she puts a line in there about how like, you know, the way someone um, experiences food has like a direct relationship to what they're like in the bed. And Donna's like watching Dean, I think eat, I think there's waffles in this too. I'm not sure, but it's like there's something about waffles. <laughs> oh, come on a people, pound of donuts, pound of donuts. Food, breakfast food, like at the table, watching him and just seeing how, how, yeah. I, one of my tags is like feeding Dean is a kink because it's just like, you just want to, you want to watch that Enjoys experience. It so <laughs> openly and viscerally. But and it, you can see how that translates. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's like watching him watching him eat, watching him enjoy food. It, it cannot be anything other than erotic because you get so into it and you're like, mm-hmm. yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, I wonder what wonder what else he does with that kind of enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With and I that mouth. <laughs> yeah. That's a big part of it. But I feel like Donna, she's very much the same. Like she's very mm-hmm. yeah. non-apologetic for who she is. Mm-hmm. You know, even even in the show. And I mean, I w- I don't consider Brianna to be like a bigger girl or a curvy girl. I think she's Mm-mm. beautiful, but she's certainly portrayed that way in the show. Yeah. But she doesn't apologize for it. She's like, oh, I like food. Leave me alone. You know? Well, I think it's that masking thing though, right? Like they both, they both build up these personas of whatever you say, I'm fine with it. Where really in reality, it does affect her, but she puts up this, eh, whatever, haha. Yeah, that's that's a funny joke or whatever, like with her. With her exes or the or the the males that are just so repulsive, but um, yeah. so it's it's that they 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 understand they've got they've got a mask and then they kind of realize what's behind it and lots of feelings and insecurities that they both have, you know, just like everybody does. But the, it's it's very I think apparent when you look at Donna when you see the little digs that she does deal with and how you could just see that little that micro you know reaction that she tries to like brush off i think hibbing nine one nine nine one one or nine eleven nine one one is um that one episode is very when she she sees her old ex and you see how Mm. she's like trying to just laugh it off but you could tell that what he says still affects her and she's probably still dealing with some feelings for him that she's trying to reconcile with and how it was toxic and it wasn't a good relationship, but you know, she was still at that point. So yeah, I, I identify with Donna a lot when it comes to like past relationships and how you need to learn from them, grow past them and realize you're just as valuable in the partnership um, Mm -hmm. as the other person. And you don't need to worry about just making them happy. You have to be happy. Uh, and I think she's so giving and so caring and so sweet that people might not always necessarily realize that, you know, she's a very insecure. She's also a, a little insecure muffin. She's just, you just want to like is. protect her, you know, and be like, it's okay, sweetie. I know you're a badass, but you're going to have these feelings that you're going to work through, but you know, you've got to, you've got to love yourself enough. And I think, yeah. I'm hoping that, you know, Donna's, Donna really got to a better, a better place, you know, for mm-hmm. herself too. It's like my wish yes. wish for Donna. So yeah, it's Holy really good. Thing. It's, it's fun. It's fun read. Um, and it's just like, no, why are you, ah, just talk to each other. <laughs> just yeah. do that. Just so, fucking, yeah. 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 So you'll get, you'll yeah. be, you'll be like screaming at them. Like, why aren't you not? Yeah. So the POV switches back and forth between Dean and Donna a lot, but, um, Oh, great. Yeah. So great. It's just great. I love, I love, I love some POV switching. Yeah. yeah. No, I am mid, I'm mid chapter on a different thing currently, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. when I'm done with that chapter, I'll be able to pick this up. Cause they're not like, there's usually a gap between the chapters Yeah, and then it follows on. So yeah, no, this is next in my to be read queue. And I think maybe about, 20 25% in is when it starts to get it's, so you know, it's not a it's not a it's not a really slow burn so it's like it's a little bit of a build up so maybe like the fourth or fifth chapter is when it starts to like really get fun um in a different in a different way um yeah with them going to town on each other so yeah 
It's good. Oh, great. Good. Cool. That's cool. my recommendation. Yay. Yay. So not too bad for not having too much. Uh... <laughs> you did <laughs> too good. You did good. <laughs> I'm very, very impressed. Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm learning from you. I'm learning from you, Carly. <laughs> Uh, so wow. I guess so should we should we wrap up because this has been another long one. <laughs> yeah, they love it though. They love it. They love it. We come and we're like, we have a pawn, but we're gonna talk about it first. And they're like, fucking suppose we'll listen to you talk then. We want the yeah. pawn. Yes. So yeah, we will uh we'll so I guess we're gonna we're gonna wrap up. this one up and let you know that if you want to reach out to us, you can email us at idlinginthimpala at gmail.com. Or on Twitter, we are at idling in the letter D Impala. If you would like to make your voice a male, you could check the description for a link to actually send us a voice message. If you're not one that wants to send us a really long email or don't want to tweet or DM us, you can leave us a voice message. So please think about doing that. Links in the description. Please. Yes. We'd love, to, we'd love to hear from some of you that way. You can also find links to our personal socials and our AO3 accounts in the link tree description. And there's a link to my author website, which has my original fiction. And her new book. My new book, Kaibo Cantor. Get yes. it. Contemporary Get it. Western it. romance. Dean inspired. Yes. All the things. Yes. Um, also in the description, you'll find a link to our Kofi page. If you feel like you can give a little donation, give a little back for all the hard work that goes into this podcast, we would be endlessly grateful. And we also have a merch store. We got merch, y'all. Um, check it out. We will be in the, I mean, it will probably already be happening by the time this episode goes out. We record like way in advance, um, but we will be sort of like, polling you guys' opinions, what kind of merch you want to see, what kind of designs you want to see. So if you've got any ideas, hit us up on Twitter. If we can, we absolutely will do them. So Mm -hmm. check out the merch as well in the description. And with that, we will say thank you for joining us in the back seat and we will see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.